a lot happening in a variety of blockchains out there. And what we try to do here on this show is give you guys some deep dives. And today is no different. It's going to be a good one on Polygon. Make sure and stick around. My name is Paul Barrett. Welcome back in to TechPath. All right. So joining me today is Brendan Farmer, who is the co-founder over at Polygon. Great to have you on the show again. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Happy to be yeah. back. So a lot, a lot of news happening for you guys. And really, I think when you look at just the, the advancements that we've seen with Polygon here of late, you guys have a big announcement coming up, February 23rd. Uh, aggregation day, of course, starts to hit here. So tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing on that date and also give us a kind of a breakdown of what the ag layer is. Yeah, so the uh, first component of the aggregation layer, which is the unified bridge, is going live. So we're going to be deploying smart contracts to mainnet. And this is a very small step toward the eventual vision of the ag layer. So the ag layer okay. is what allows us to take this ecosystem that we have in, that we're building in Polygon, which is all these chains that are running on Polygon CDK, and it allows us to stitch them together. So instead of having fragmented liquidity and state and users, we can have a unified ecosystem where liquidity is shared. Uh, we've got a, a kind of a chart here that shows the unified liquidity with Aglair. So we'll let that kind of play in the in the background. When you uh, get into some of the big advancements here and what this really means for Polygon, what are some of the things that you guys feel this really starts to shift especially going forward, this is step one or one of the early steps. Uh, really, what kind of big changes do you feel like this is going to help with Polygon as an overall? Yeah, so I, I think that it's not just Polygon. I think the, the entire crypto ecosystem is stuck between um, the scaling debate where uh, on the one hand, we have monolithic chains where, uh, sure, we, we have shared access to liquidity and state and composability. Um, but fundamentally, there are scaling limits in, in, for monolithic chains. And on the other hand, we have modular chains, which have uh, the ability to horizontally scale. But we have, and we're seeing this with L2s on Ethereum, we have fragmented uh, liquidity and user bases. And it's really difficult to, um, to move assets and state between those chains. And so for us, like the aggregated blockchain thesis is an attempt to like move beyond um, these two choices. So uh, to have a horizontally scalable modular eco ecosystem where uh, we're able to have super fast, uh, low latency interop and composability between those chains. Yeah. W Brendan, when you look at you know the utility, because this has been one of the things that I think a lot of people who follow our show, you know, they're always looking for that one thing in terms of utility that different blockchains are bringing to uh, scalability and Polygon has been one around lowering fees, obviously for ETH. This, of course, goes in that direction. What will this mean for utility use cases, businesses that might be wanting to deploy on this? Because there's been a variety that have done a pretty good job on deploying out their first initial blockchain ventures into certain uh, blockchains like Polygon. What will this mean for businesses going forward? Yeah, so I think it's two things. So I think first, it allows us to have this ecosystem for businesses to deploy where they can have full sovereignty and choice over the chain that they're deploying to. So, so they get to control uh, what token is, is used to operate the chain, what token is used okay. for gas fees, um, like exactly how the execution environment is set up. And, and so this is something that's new for an L2 ecosystem. But I, I think beyond that, so stepping, taking one step back, um, the ag layer fundamentally is like a vision that's targeted toward mass adoption. Like right now, right. We, we have L2s right. and, and we're able to sort of scale the capacity of ETH. But we're, if we're being realistic, we're, we're really not positioned to support uh, a million or 10 million or 100 million users entering the ecosystem. And so this is like, uh, like fundamentally trying to answer the question like, OK, when we talk about scaling in crypto, what we really mean is scaling access to liquidity and to shared state. And so how do we do that in a paradigm where we have also horizontal scalability? So, so we can like add as much block space and capacity as we need to meet demand, but we never give up this, uh, this property of supporting composability and access to liquidity. What kind of changes would have to take place for real scalability to happen? Because we're, we're nearing now, I think, a point of reflection for a lot of major brands that are looking to deploy on blockchain. 
Uh, you see it in you know everything from tokenized uh, securities. Now we're starting to see brand IP moving in this direction at a pretty heavy pace. What would be some of the next big steps for Polygon as a whole to really deal with that kind of scalable need going forward? Yeah, so so I think it's for us again, like this ability to like 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 think about Ethereum right now and, and the L two ecosystem. We have a bunch of L twos. And we have like liquidity and state that's fragmented across all of them. We have right. different Uniswap pools, different NFTs and NFT marketplaces that exist on all of these L2s. And so the vision is like, if you are a chain, if you're a, a brand or, or a, a crypto native creator, and you want to build an NFT or you want to build a game, you can enter the Polygon ecosystem and you can access this shared pool of unified liquidity. Like all you have to do is bring your NFT or your game into the Polygon ecosystem, and you'll be able to take advantage of all of the Polygon users, all the Polygon, um, you know, marketplaces for NFTs or, or you know, uh, AMMs. And, and so I, I think that this is a really important vision for the space. It's, it, it's like, how do we have horizontal scalability right. while, yeah. without giving up, you know, what, what we're giving up in the modular ecosystem? Is that where CDK comes into to play here? I mean, you look at, um, you know, just on your own website here on the chain development kit, you know, some of the elements yeah. that you see here and kind of, I guess, the process. Explain to me, first of all, what this does for developers and or other entities out there that might be looking to go this direction. Yeah, so you can think of CDK as like the building block of the Polygon ecosystem. It's it's the chain development kit. It allows you to spin up uh, new chains and to launch chains in the Polygon ecosystem. And so, uh, like with CDK, we have these building blocks for chains to add capacity or to add functionality um, or a place for them to launch NFTs or new DeFi primitives or uh, games. Um, but the ag layer is what connects uh, all of these things together and connects them to Ethereum. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your ecosystem here, projects that have committed uh, with Polygon. I mean, there's a, several in here that are well known, obviously immutable in there, Canto, Genosis Pay, um, yep. you know, and so on. I mean, you've got, you've got some big names in here. At the same time, is this something that you feel is going to be used primarily for, you know, projects like this, or do you feel like this has a much broader reach in terms of opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's super broad. Like for us, um, I would draw a contrast between other L2 ecosystems, which are, um, they're, they're I, I would say, focused on the short term in on value capture. So they're, they're taking a, a percentage of staking fees, there are restrictions on uh, the types of chains they can deploy into their ecosystem. And for us, like we view this ecosystem is just being a positive sum interaction for chains. So if you're bringing a chain with, that has positive economic value, um, then it's a win-win for both the ecosystem because that economic value is entering into the Polygon uh, ecosystem. And then uh, it's also a win-win for your chain because your chain gets to access existing pools of liquidity. It gets to access existing users. And, um, and so we think like it's starting with really big players like uh, Canto and Manta and Nier. Right. Um, but I don't think it stops there. Okay, so there's a lot. I mean, so you see this really at all layers, you know, whether it's the big, you know, big projects out there or even some of the initial projects that are just getting started? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, you can think about it like, like if you're trying to launch a game, um, you might not care that much about decentralization or uh, sort of the these ideal security properties that uh, that we get in blockchains, but you might care a lot about uh, latency and user experience and developer experience. And so it makes sense for you to have an environment that exists within, the, within this ecosystem that's decentralized and has permissionless uh, access to liquidity. Um, but I, I think in a sense, you, you get the best of both worlds because you get yeah. customization, you get sovereignty, but you also get um, access to uh, the value that's, that exists in that ecosystem. So when you look at um, proof, of, this is just a chart on uh, proof of stake chain daily transactions. Yeah. We saw, of course, that that blip we saw Ordinals. not yep yeah, not too long ago. And but at the same time, we're seeing a little bit more of an, an incline right here. So in the process here between proof of stake and zk EVM, you know the two platforms. Why would anyone use the old model? Wouldn't everybody be on well, zk EVM? 
Yeah, so so I think you can see uh, right now a huge delta in the fees that people are paying to transact on proof of stake versus ZKVM. And so right. I think for a lot of applications, uh, including DeFi applications, there, there, there's actually a lot of DeFi activity still on the POS mm-hmm. chain. Sure. Um, sure. I think that there are a lot of users that, who are more fee sensitive. And, uh, and, and I also think that, you know, keeping in mind that we're planning to upgrade the POS chain to become a ZK powered Validium. Um, I don't think that, that it's always going to be just the old chain that uh, that's replaced by okay. our new okay. ZK chains. I was looking at just the ZK EVM chart here. You can kind of see the growth right here. I mean, this has been substantial growth all the way back, really just from June of last year. So continuing to move pretty, pretty, uh, pretty smoothly here. Okay, well, let's yeah. talk about micro... I mean, with that kind of oh, growth, you, you go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to call out. We, uh, we we actually have a lot of technical upgrades that are coming soon to zkVM as well, and so we think that, mm-hmm. like, like our, our posture up until this point has been to sort of hold off on really pushing the gas on on growth and, and attracting DeFi projects and TVL. But um, I think that you'll see that change over over the next few months. Well, that's good. I mean, that that obviously will that'll be skyrocketing growth then. What about microtransactions? Because this is a scenario that, you know, we've seen success in projects like um, you could go to Avalanche, you could also go to Solana, microtransactions, especially when you go in-game uh, transactions, or even in some cases, retail scenarios that could play into this, loyalty applications, all sorts of utility use cases. What about microtransactions? What is the future for that on Polygon? Yeah, so I think that for microtransactions, ZK is actually a really, really important component of this because ZK allows us to uh, basically customize execution environments. um, And then we get to preserve compatibility with Ethereum and with the existing ecosystem. And so I can imagine um, a hyper-performant VM like Polygon Maiden or something that uh, will come in the future being a, actually a really, really good venue for microtransactions, mm-hmm. especially because uh, we're able to add on privacy at basically no cost. And so um, I'm not sure like how many microtransaction users actually care about privacy, but if they do, uh, it's actually a really nice um, feature uh, that we not only get super high throughput, uh, amazing scalability, but we also get the ability to support privacy. Right. When you look at, okay, so that I think really kind of presents an interesting format right now because Polygon's making some strategic moves, you know, in restructuring a little bit about the ecosystem itself. Next steps for you guys, what are, especially in this cycle, because we're going to see a lot of new projects come on board maybe in the next 18 months or so. Likelihood of we'll see a lot of business use cases start to select chains a lot of opportunity here kind of rolling up into what could be some very key winners, you know, uh, especially around these L2s. What are some of the things you guys feel are going to be critical for Polygon in the next year to year and a half? Yeah, so I, I think it's two things. So first, I think it's building network effects around the ag layer. And so I, I think that those network effects are reinforcing, right? Like if you have an ecosystem that has a huge amount of liquidity, and that liquidity is fundamentally unified and shared across chains, then that's a really, really powerful network effect and a really powerful incentive for new chains to join the ecosystem. So the second thing that I would say is right now, especially on Ethereum, we're in this situation where um, uh, like we have liquidity and users and state that's fragmented across a bunch of different EVM chains, especially optimistic rollups. And so we released a couple weeks ago uh, our type one ZKVM prover, which is a huge breakthrough for this space because it allows us to immediately start generating proofs for any EVM chain. So that means that any optimistic rollup, we can onboard onto this ecosystem that we're building around the ag layer. And so I think that that's a really powerful thing where, um, you know, a, a builder could launch in another ecosystem uh, on an optimistic rollup or using a different stack. But fundamentally, like Polygon doesn't care about everyone in the ecosystem using the same stack. Like we yeah. care about um, people using the ag layer to share liquidity. And so the type one is this really amazing technology that allows us to onboard those chains into uh, the ecosystem that we're building around the ag layer. 
that's going to open up, I think, some big opportunities for you as well, you know, just in terms of the amount of projects that could get involved. And we were showing just there on screen the number of projects that are flowing into it. We've got East Denver coming up, so there's gonna be a whole you know, slew of builders uh, coming into East Denver. Probably some big announcements as well there at, at East Denver. Are you guys doing anything at East Denver that is kind of uh, getting Polygon's name out there in front of everybody? Yeah, sure. So we're going to have, uh, I believe, a co-working space set up. We're doing an event. Um, and then I'm giving a talk, I know Jordy's giving a talk, um, and we'll we'll have a presence on panels kind of throughout the throughout the week. So we will be there, and obviously, yeah, always happy to to speak to people. Yeah, anything that you see happening at ETH Denver, it feels like there's a little bit of pent up um, demand. I think for a lot of these blockchains to kind of drop some news at ETH Denver. Anything you're anticipating in in the arc of blockchain overall that that might happen at ETH Denver? Yeah. I mean, I think for us, like we uh, we've been pretty active and vocal the last few weeks, and so we we haven't been waiting for uh, for East Denver to to really yeah. drop a, a big announcement. But uh, but I I think that we're going to continue telling the story that we think is really powerful around the ag layer and uh, and just what we're building and, and and why we think it's like the right approach for the space. Right. Well, ETH obviously doing really well in the markets right now. We'll get a chance. As far as the Dencon um, up, upgrade coming down the pipe with Ethereum. How big of an impact will that have really for Polygon as a whole? Yeah, so I, I think certainly for the ZKVM, it's going to be really exciting to see fees go down. Because right now, like uh, like all rollups have sort of been caught in this mode where they're overpaying to use call data uh, because call data wasn't really designed for this purpose. Right. And so I think it's going to be a really cool thing to see Ethereum get more scalable uh, as a result of the upgrade. Yeah, listen, if we can get fees uh, down on ETH, I think the ecosystem all wins and we'll probably see a lot more, even more adoption of what we've seen already with ETH going forward. Uh, Brendan, it's always great having you on the show. I love to kind of get the insights of what's happening with the major projects. So uh, we appreciate you stopping in today. Thanks so much. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Paul. You bet. All right, so you guys maybe are on uh, the podcast side of things. Jump over here to the YouTube channel. It's a great place to get additional content. And if you're not in our Diamond Circle, that's our own member group. It's a great place to get more podcasts. We do some more deep dive research over there. All you have to do is click the link down below. That'll get you into the club, kind of. And of course, you guys can catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.